Hi, in this video we're going to talk about encrypting your database backups. It's something that I don't see happening a lot and uh, frankly I don't understand why because if you have sensitive information in your database you are supposed to be protecting it. And uh, the fact is a lot of people go ahead and implement transparent data encryption, they implement things like uh, cell level encryption, principle of least privileges, etc. on the actual live database but don't really put that kind of effort into their backups. And more often than not when I ask uh, customers and other database professionals about this the uh, the pushback I get is well you know the DR scenario becomes that much more complicated because of uh, encrypted backups the time taken to restore the database also increases and that is right yes it is much more difficult to manage an encrypted backup than to manage a straightforward uh, backup and uh, that's something that you have to take into account and put it into your BCP rather than ignore encrypting backups just because they are difficult to do. In this video, I'm going to try and show you some of these things. So the first thing I want to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the master database. I was working on a database called example sec DB, which doesn't exist anymore, but I'm going to check it by just dropping it if it exists. I'm going to create the new database and inside this new database i'm going to load some data approximately a million rows so that i can show you the impact of uh, encryption in terms of backup and restore in terms of a volume of data that needs to be encrypted and then restored or backed up uh, for the purpose of this demonstration i'm going to assume that all data is already compressed because that is another uh, question that i frequently get uh, is encryption faster or better if compression exists on the database uh, the idea being that compression in itself is a form of encryption if you think about it. Now uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that I don't have any legacy artifacts already existing so I'm just going to go ahead and clear up some of that okay and uh, let's go ahead and do the first thing. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a master key and the reason I want to create the master key is because the master key is the key that protects all the other sensitive information. The reason that's important for us is because if you lose the master key or if you uh, forget the password like how we have here, then you're pretty much guaranteeing that you'll not be able to restore the database or uh, you're looking at a total data loss scenario, which again is one of the reasons why most DBAs hesitate because they don't really uh, they don't really have much control over this and uh, typically what happens is that in the hurry of trying to restore database in a BCP scenario, uh, things get left out and one of the things that typically get left out is the master key and uh, so for that reason uh, I'm just going to go ahead and call it out here so when you create the master key please use a password that is much stronger than this and also make sure that you back up your master key because without that you're not going to be able to do much now that we have the master key the next thing is obviously we need, we need a certificate so I'm just going to create a certificate for the time being and I'm going to export the master key as well as the certificate because that's the first thing you want to do immediately after you create a master key and a certificate. You want to back it up. So in this case, I'm going to say open the master key for decryption using the same password as the one that I created it with. And I'm going to say export the master key to this location, which is master key backup. And there we go. So now that the master key has been backed up, the next thing is to back up the certificate. So you'll see I've got the uh, open, cert, uh, open master key by decryption password and then I've got the certificate here. You'll see that my certificate file is this one BCP, uh, my certificate BKP and then it, it itself is encrypted using another key called my certificate BKPK so which is private key. So let me just go ahead and export my uh, master key, as, uh, my certificate as well. Uh, close it doesn't really matter it's closed automatically but anyways now that I've got my certificate and my master key I'm going to use the certificate and master key to go ahead and encrypt the backup so you'll see in this case I'm using my certificate from before and the encryption algorithm AES256 you also have AES128 etc the more complicated or the larger the number the more the uh, number of digits that get used so uh, the, the, the backup becomes that much more uh, secure but at the same time it consumes that much more CPU resources to perform the encryption so it's a balance between a very strong algorithm versus um, a fast algorithm. I'm going to back up the database as you can see here I'm backing up it into a file called uh, example sec db it's using AES256 and my certificate so I'm going to run this really quick okay, it's going to take a couple of seconds I guess 
And uh, what I'm going to do after that is you can see that this is the stats for the backup. I'm just going to copy it here in a new window so that we can compare it with a backup that doesn't use encryption. So you'll see here again in this particular scenario, I'm using all the remaining uh, uh, options as before except for the encryption part of it. So you'll see that I'm using compression here as well as compression over here. And uh, let's go ahead and run a traditional backup without any form of encryption. There we go. So let's compare the output of these two backup commands that we just ran right now. As you can see here, we've backed it up and the first one took six seconds and the second one took 5.8 seconds. So naturally you can see that encrypted backups do take a little bit longer than normal simply because they have one additional operation to do. Having said that, if you look at the database itself, you will see that because we use compression, the files are the same. So one advantage that we get with encrypted data is it's compatible with compression. So what happens here is that the compression occurs first and the compressed output is what is encrypted. You'll also note, notice that the encrypted backup is actually slightly smaller than the compressed backup. So having said that, what we can see here is that yes, there is an overhead in terms of backing up the database. Uh, when you're working with encrypted data simply because of the additional encryption that needs to happen. This kind of problem usually gets worse as the database size increases. So that's not definitely something you want to factor in into your uh, database plan, uh, into your BCP plan. But at the same time, this is not really an if else condition. It's kind of like, yes, I need backups and yes, I need them to be secure. It's not really a choice between uh, I need fast backups. So I'm not going to do encryption. Okay, so what I've done next is uh, I've gone ahead and cleared off the database. So you'll see that I've dropped all the certificates, I've dropped all the databases. So assuming that we've had a power failure and you know the drive got corrupted and uh, we're restoring the database onto a new machine or uh, just restoring it back into the same machine, but we've lost all the other information. Uh, in that case, what we're gonna do is again, uh, we've got the master key that we backed up previously. We're gonna bring that into a secure location uh, on the machine where we can restore it from. We obviously need to know the password with which we encrypted the master key initially. So that's what uh, this is about. So you'll see in this case, I'm saying go to this location and pick up the master key and then decrypt that information using the password that was used at the time of creating the backup. Now that this master key has been restored using this master key, I can create the certificate. So you'll see that we don't really restore certificates. We just create the certificate. Uh, again, you'll see in this case that when I created the uh, private key, I used this password, which is the same as over what we have over here. So I'm basically saying that create a private key using this password to restore this certificate. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. Here we go. And that's the certificate restored. Next, what I'm going to do is uh, obviously we don't have the database already, so I'm going to go ahead and restore the database. You'll see in this case, I'm saying restore the database using the master key using this password. And you'll see that I'm restoring this example secdb.back and the other one is the compressed, which is not using encryption. So let's go ahead and run both of these together really quick. The first one is going to restore. Uh, oops. Okay, let me just go ahead and run that again. The second one is going to fail because the example sec db already exists, but uh, we'll see that in a minute. Okay, so you'll see that basically when it restored the secure uh, encrypted backup, what we're seeing here is uh, it took 12.838 uh, seconds. Now I'm going to drop this database and I'm going to run the uh, restore command with the compressed backup. Just give it a second you'll see that this one basically restored all the pages in the database and it took uh, it was restoring it at about 40.861 megabytes per second obviously the volume maintenance permissions if you have them that's a good thing to have because that'll significantly increase the speed i have a post about it on the uh, website definitely check it out okay and this one is done as well the second uh, command and if you look over here what you'll see is when we restore the backup, which is the compressed backup, you'll see that it took slightly longer than the encrypted backup. So uh, you can see that when we take a backup, there seems to be some kind of uh, degradation in the performance of the backup. But at the same time, when we're restoring it, uh, we seem to have an improvement. And uh, 
that's kind of the uh, the crux of the matter here like when you're doing this whole database encryption part of it there is some amount of cpu and memory and io utilization that happens and definitely there are going to be an excess usage as far as uh, the actual encryption itself is concerned but having said that uh, you need to go ahead and encrypt your backups simply because when you encrypt your backups you're protecting not just the data that was there in the live database but also the copy of that data sitting somewhere else on a hard disk which could have easily been picked up by someone who uh, knows that you've not implemented any uh, kind of um, security. A typical thing is all these backups are usually stored in low tier storage that is easily corruptible and often what happens is that when the drives are removed after corruption they're not wiped out and as a result there's a possibility that someone could have access to a database backup that isn't uh, encrypted and it could be restored potentially. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, what I wanted to show you here was that yes, encryption of your backups is something that you need to do. Previously, we didn't really have this feature in SQL Server. So we used to take a backup and then encrypt it separately outside of the uh, the, the engine. So it was some, something that was done in the uh, disk level by the operating system maybe. Now what happens is we can actually encrypt the data as it is being written into the backup file. Therefore making sure that at no point in time is the uh, data actually accessible. Uh, outside of the security mechanisms inside of SQL Server. So you should definitely consider implementing this and it's not really a choice if you have uh, personally identifiable health information, if you have credit card information in order to remain compliant with the uh, the, the, the certification like HIPAA or uh, PCI DSS, this is a requirement. You have, you have to back up your databases. It's not really optional. So uh, this video hopefully gives you a good idea about how to back up your database, how to restore your database, how to create the keys and certificates, how to restore the keys and certificates. And that's pretty much all that you need to know in terms of being able to restore your database backups. I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, thank you for watching.